Alright guys, we're back working on the patrol today uh, for episode 3 of the build series and what we're doing today is a roof console and UHF install uh, so I actually have nothing on the roof at the moment and I'll be putting this up there so shout out to uh, Kelvin Evans on Facebook um, just type in roof consoles and marketplace and you should be able to find him he does most um, sizes and shapes for patrols and land cruises and that type of thing um, so yeah really happy with how it came out and a fair price so we'll be fitting that and it goes up in the middle of the roof and I'll be able to put my UHF in here uh, with the handheld um, part being mounted here and then I'll have a switch panel here and also a bit of storage up there for some other stuff so um, first things first is we've got to rip out the interior light and the uh, rear view mirror because that's how it gets up and mounts using those existing holes in there. Alright, so just uh, unclip the little plastic cover for the light here and it's just got two screws holding it in. So we're just taking them off now and we just did the same with the front um, rear view mirror. So that was yeah, just a clip and then three screws holding it in. So the, the light in the rear view will still go on but it will clamp onto the roof console to the roof. Um, so we'll, we get extension um, bolts and everything with it, wherever they've gone. Alright guys, so I've just cut the existing wires and we've had to put new plugs on and extend them a bit. That's just because the roof console going on is going to come down a little bit so the light will mount down here. So we'll put the roof console on now and see how it all goes. Okay, so we finally mounted it up. Uh, the two holes that were in here from the old um, light, the holes that were pre-drilled didn't line up, so we had to drill new ones. Um, and then we lined up the front ones here for the rear view. So now we just got to attach the light back on, wire it back up. All right, so we've done the roof console now. Uh, we mounted it up with the rear view and the light. Uh, the lights are wired in now and working. Um, the only thing we have to do is the UHF. Now we haven't done that today because I'm still waiting for the antenna. Um, so that will go into the little cavity behind here and we'll mount the handheld along here somewhere. And then uh, we'll wire it all up, put the aerial on the antenna and um, it'll be all good to go. Alright guys, so we're continuing on from the video we filmed the other day. We're fitting the UHF. So it's just a little Oricom unit, with a handheld device, and then just a 3 dbi Oricom antenna. Alright, so we're just taking the this old ancient UHF out um, to see if there's some wires we can use for that. And then I'll probably be replacing this whole doubled in here with a brand new touch screen. Alright, 
so when we were taking out the old UHF and the radio, came across a bit of a pigsty in here. So we're trying to clean it up a bit now. And what we found was two old um, aerial cables, which weren't even being used because they weren't connected. Obviously there was no aerial on the car. So we've run them back and we pulled them both out and they were just sitting in the engine bay here. And that's in there. So the less cables in the car now, the better. And we'll run the new antenna cable through. through the wire now for the power to the UHF. So we're just connecting it back to a power source here. I'm gonna run it up the pillar pod and then over through here into the cavity in the roof console. So we're hoping we've got enough length. I only give you about two meters or something in the standard pack, so. So we've run the power cables in through the roof now and we're just running the antenna lead through. So we've just obviously run that from the antenna here through the grill and then along this cable and we'll just cable tie it along here and in through the firewall. So we'll run that back up following that power cable now along the seam of the roof and then we can mount the UHF in the roof console and we'll run all the cables through through the roof into here and then we'll probably run the handheld out all right guys so we've tidied it all up now it's looking a hundred percent better than it was before so we're just going to pop the radio back in and should be good to go For anyone wondering what antenna it is, it's so an ANU 930 3DBI uh, heavy duty fiberglass. So, the reason I picked that one is because um, probably doing more like mountainous stuff than long range, and I also don't want it taller than the car, so I have to worry about it hitting on stuff. And then the UHF we got is a uh, uh, 395. And it's all based on the handheld controller and it's just a little five watt um, and i think it'd be perfect for what we need it for not going to be using it every day it's more when we're on a bit of a trip with a group so we can communicate between the cars so hopefully it's good and this is the old uhf that was in the car it's a uniden gps 105 um so that came out and we got all this wiring out with it and a bit more and I'll show you what the final product looks like. Alright guys so the UHF antenna all installed now um, only took a couple of hours but most fidgety stuff was uh, trying to clear up all the old wires in here um, so if you have a look we've just got the single din radio here and the gap where the old UHF was so now what I'll be doing is ripping that out and a little bit and probably getting a double din touch screen um gives me a bit more room and a few more features like car play and um gps and everything like that 
and you can see happy with the UX setup up here. Slot stuff like that. I can change the channel, volume, everything on the handheld. Uh, I've got a speaker and the microphone, obviously. And the actual unit just mounted up in this cavity, like we showed you during the video. Um, so yeah, we tested it all out, all works, and I'm really happy with it. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and keep watching the videos. Thank you.